Uh, we've dealt with uh, stereographic projections of cubic crystals and the beauty of the cubic crystal is that you don't need to worry about whether uh, the in, you know if you have a 111 direction that's actually exactly parallel to a 111 plane normal right that isn't the case as soon as you are non cubic so for example this is our 11 plane in this two dimensional diagram and the normal to that plane is this one we are using round brackets for normal but the one one direction is here so no longer is it the case that the one one direction is parallel to the one one plane normal it may be in special cases so for example this is the zero one direction and also the zero one plane normal because in this case the angle here is 90 degrees but in general the plane normal with the same indices is not parallel to a direction with the same indices okay so you've got to be very careful with that okay so here is a cubic stereogram uh, you remember we have the tetrads along here these are the 110 type poles you can see that and this is the uh, these are the triads and that's cubic so here, for example, the 1-1 one, one direction is normal to the 1-1 one, one plane. Now, I'm going to make this orthorhombic. So instead of having a lattice parameter of 5, I've got three different lattice parameters, 2, 3, and 8. So this is now our 1-1 one, one plane. And that's the 1-1 one, one plane normal, whereas this is the 1-1 one, one direction. Okay. So you can see that by distorting uh, the cubic into the orthorhombic, uh, this particular pole has moved towards the horizontal axis. Yeah? You can see it was located here, and now it's located here. Okay? So the orthorhombic stereogram looks quite different from the cubic stereogram. Of course, it depends on the choice of lattice parameters, and I've exaggerated uh, the difference in the lattice parameters. But you will not, uh, you know, it will look rather strange. And this time, uh, bear in mind that these are plane normals that we are plotting. The direction will require a second stereogram. So in the cubic system, the stereographic projection doesn't depend on the lattice parameters. And you do not, you only need one stereographic projection to represent both directions and plane normals. For any other, crystal system, you need two stereographic projections, one to represent plane normals and one to represent directions. And even if you don't use stereographic projections, if you're doing calculations, you need to distinguish between plane normals and directions. Okay? Because plane normals are vectors in reciprocal space and directions are vectors in real space. We haven't done reciprocal space as yet, but we will do it. Okay, so just to show you, Uh, okay, that's just plotting these poles here. Now, uh, this is to show you the effect of lattice parameter. So, in this case, the three lattice parameters are 2, 3, and 8, and 2, 3, and 5. So, here the lattice parameter is more similar to the other two, and therefore the pattern here changes. So, the stereographic projection is a function of the lattice parameters and angles when we are dealing with non-cubic systems. Is that clear to everyone? Right. Uh, here we have our orthorhombic system again. And this is the stereographic projection for plane normals. And this is the corresponding stereographic projection for directions. So this is the plane normal and this is the direction you can see the direction here is different from the plane normal and therefore this must have a different appearance from this when you're plotting say a slip direction and a slip plane in a hexagonal system they may not necessarily you know the direction with the same indices as the plane normal will not be at 90 degrees to that, okay? 
Everyone happy with that? Now, this is the hexagonal system, uh, which, you know, nowadays is very common in, in steels, because we alloy steels a lot with manganese, right? And manganese helps to stabilize the hexagonal form of iron, the so-called epsilon iron. Uh, and this is our hexagonal unit cell. This is the A parameter, A parameter, and this is the C parameter. And the angle here is 120 degrees. So if I just draw one of the unit cells, it looks like this, okay? This is X, Y, and Z is pointing out of the plane of the board, and this is A and A. So this angle here is 120 degrees. What is the angle between the 100 plane and 010 plane? The normals to those planes, yeah? What is the angle between the 100 and 010 plane normal? Yeah, let me draw what you just indicated. So these are the um, these are the one zero zero planes. So the normal to that plane is along here, okay. And zero one zero, yeah, ninety degrees to these lines here, okay. So this is zero one zero. So what's the angle between those two? Hmm? 60 degrees, not 120 degrees. Remember that very carefully when you do a hexagonal stereographic projection and you're plotting plane normals, the angle between the 100 and the 010 poles is 60 degrees, not 120 degrees. The angle between the 100 direction and the 010 direction is 120 degrees. Okay? So, if you look at this stereographic projection for the hexagonal crystal, we have 100 and 010 poles located 60 degrees apart. Okay? So, 100 is this face here, and 010 is this face here, and this face here is bar 110 because look, it intersects the x-axis at minus 1 here and intersects the y-axis at 1, so it's bar 110. Now, doesn't that seem strange? Because aren't those crystallographically equivalent faces? Yeah. This face of the hexagon is exactly the same in terms of at atomic arrangement as this face and this face. And yet we have different indices, right? So in the hexagonal system, if you use the three index notation, that means x, y, and z, then you will get different indices, even though they are crystallographically equivalent planes or directions. So how do we solve this? Four index notation. Have you come across that? Now, in the case of planes, it's very easy. So, we have HKL as the three index notation. We simply make it HKIL, where I is equal to minus H plus K. Okay? So, 100 zero zero becomes 10 zero bar 10. Zero. Right? What does 010 zero zero become? Zero one, yeah, zero one bar one zero, and bar one one zero, bar one one zero zero. Now, if you look at those three, they are the same permutation of the four digits, you know. You've got two ones and two zeros in all of those. So the advantage of the four index notation is that crystallographically equivalent planes look 
equivalent when you look at the indices, whereas that immediately you wouldn't see that they are crystallographically equivalent, even though we know by looking at the diagram that they are. So to convert from 3 index to 4 index in the case of plane normals, you simply remove i. So it's very easy, the 4 index notation. This is called the miller brave indices. Okay. Yeah, so it's, uh, this is just summarizing the same issue again that, um, you know, we have what are crystallographically equivalent planes which don't look equivalent, but when we convert them to four index notation, they do appear equivalent. And the i is simply minus the sum of h plus k. Okay? Now, we need to also have four index notation for directions for this, exactly the same reason. But it's a little bit more complicated because the Weiss zone rule must be res respected. So you remember the Weiss zone rule? That if you have a direction which lies in a plane, then HU plus KV plus LW equals zero. So the Weiss zone rule was H U plus K V plus L W equals zero. So H K L is the plane and U V W is the direction if direction lies in plane. Okay. Now in the cubic system that's very easy to understand that you know, if you have a direction which lies in the plane, then the plane normal is at 90 degrees, so the dot product is zero. Okay? But you can't do the dot product easily uh, in non-cubic systems, so we will prove this later on, very, very easily, once we've done the reciprocal lattice. So we've got to design the four index notation for the hexagonal system in such a way that the Weiss zone, zone rule still works for the hexagonal system. Okay, so uh, this is just to show you that the basic principles of constructing the stereogram are still the same, that for example, this plus this gives us this. Okay, if they lie on the same zone, you only need two vectors to define a plane. Every other vector can be generated by a summation. A and of course, we have hexagonal symmetry. So if we've got a pole here, we've got to have there, 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 and there as well. Right, so, uh, to convert the three index notation for planes into four index notation, we simply add the third index as minus h plus k. And similarly, to convert the four index notation of directions, uh, where capital U, capital V, capital J, and cap capital W, we write capital J is equal to U plus, minus U plus V. Uh, and I've used capitals here to distinguish them from the three index notation, which is small u, small v, small w. So we just need to look at these two formulae and derive a relationship between the capital U and the small u. Right, very easy. So we know that I is equal to minus H minus K and capital J is minus U minus V, capital V, and this is simply the Weiss zone rule where I've replaced the I by minus H minus K, and similarly, um, in this case, okay, so then when we expand this, uh, H capital U minus H capital J gives me this, this, and this, and this is the three index notation, so it follows that capital U minus capital J will equal to small u. Yeah, simple. It's not a simple question of striking off the third index in the case of the direction. It's got to satisfy the Weiss zone rule, and therefore 
the small u is equal to capital U minus j, small v is equal to capital V minus j, and w is the same because it's the, the capital W is the same as the small w. Okay. It's not difficult to remember. Yeah. It's just cap capital V is equal to small, uh, sorry, small v is equal to capital V minus the third index. Simple. Yeah. Happy with that? Yeah, some of you don't look happy, but are you happy? Okay, good. <laughs> right, so, this is now directions. Uh, 1, 0, 0 becomes, if I express this at integers, it becomes 2 bar 1 bar 1, 0. And just to show you that makes sense, uh, here is our four index notation now. This is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, and this is an additional axis at 120 degrees, right? So, 1, 0, 0 is this vector here, okay? 2 is this, bar 1 is going minus 1 along, um, so we have this bar 1 and bar 1, so minus 1 along here and minus 1 along here. So we get this as the vector 2 bar 1 bar 1 0 and one third of that is exactly equal to that, right? So it all makes sense. And notice now that the directions which are actually crystallographically equivalent look crystallographically equivalent, okay? Everyone happy with that? Okay, that's all for today, and thank you. For